Hi there, and welcome back to the channel Machining with Joe, a channel where I share with you my journey as a beginner machinist. So today's video is going to be a little bit different from the norm because I bought a couple of second-hand measuring implements the other day. Actually, let's um, quickly open them up and show you. So the first one that I bought is this depth gauge. Really nice depth gauge, really good quality and doesn't look like it's being abused too much. So that is going to come in great use. But the other thing that I bought was a Mitotoyo lever action dial indicator. And it's got all the bits there, but unfortunately the business part, the actual dial itself doesn't work. So it seems like maybe something is jammed up in here because you move the lever, nothing moves in here and it just feels really solid. So that's what today's video is going to be about. I'm going to strip this down and see if I can salvage it and get it working. As always guys, if you find my content useful and want to see more machining and bits like this, then please subscribe and help the channel grow. But for now, let's take a closer look at this and see if we can get this working. So this Mitotoyo lever action indicator, as you can see here, when we move this, this dial should be spinning around like crazy, but it's doing absolutely nothing. So we're going to have to open this up and hopefully it's just something that's a bit tight and we can free it up. So let's open this up now and see if we can see what's causing our fault. So looking at it, we've got these four screws on the side here. I'm going to undo them with this tiny flathead screwdriver. And once we're in, we should be able to see what's going on in there. Right, so with that last screw removed, this side bit just pops off. Right, so I can act if you look in there, I can actually see that this part is moving. But nothing else seems to be moving. So let's pop this little side casing off here. Right, it's getting this last screw on here. So there's three screws in here that held this plate on. Right, with them removed, we can now pop this up. He says. <laughs> right, so that all seems to move in there, which is good. Makes me wonder, is the clock knackered. No, the clock moves. So everything is actually free in there and the dial, if you look closely, I'll move it with the screwdriver and the dial moves as well. So I wonder if it's just a case of someone's put it back together incorrect. So here's where I'm at. The actual dial part itself is all free moving and doesn't clog up. This quite weird and unique lever mechanism all seems to work fine. So it makes me wonder if someone's had this apart before and put it back together wrong. Because looking on YouTube, this on a lot of other people's looks like it's actually the other way around. So I might quickly try flipping that over and seeing how that goes. Give that a go. I don't know how hard this is going to be to take apart. Unfortunately, that was so fiddly, I didn't actually manage to get much of that on footage, but we have a working dial. So basically what had happened by the looks of it is the lever in there had popped over that brass looking arm there and it basically just lost all tension on the sort of clock mechanism that operates the dial. So I managed to, what took probably about half an hour this did, but I managed to get it working. So I'm really happy with that. Um, let's quickly set it to zero. So movement in one way, we've got a full rotation and movement in the other way, also a full rotation. So I'm really happy, I've actually managed to get this to work, 
probably one of the most fiddliest things I've ever done in my lifetime. But because there's not much footage of that, I'm going to quickly put this back together and maybe I'll just give you a run through of me using this in operation. So this is all back together now and mounted on my tool post. And just to show you how I think it should roughly work, I've set a slight little bit of preload on the end of this dial. And now when I run my lathe, So you can see the dial there, so it's actually showing me that I've got that's about 0.2 millimeters of run out. So now I've got this set up, it's a really easy way for me to dial in any run out on my lathe, especially when using a four jaw chuck. And I just want to quickly show you by moving the stock that I've got in the lathe further into the chuck. Look how much it reduces the run out on the part. So that run out there is about 0.05 millimeters. So, so much better than it was when it had really extended travel on the stock. So there we have it then guys. The dial test indicator is all back together and working. Sorry this video was so short and I didn't go into much detail, but putting that thing back together was so fiddly and the camera was just getting in the way. But I hope it's given you a little insight into those dial test indicators, how they work inside, just in case your one's faulty. But for now guys, that's all. Thank you for watching this video. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.